Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Meet the Chicago Historians on Monday, March the 19th, and the year is 2012 or 2012, whichever fits your fancy. And today is also St. Joseph's Day, and we are broadcasting from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the northwest side. And now, here is our moderator, Jack Ryan. Good afternoon, Jack. Good afternoon on this last official day of winter. 2012, where we're doing this recording on the 19th of March. It almost said February. I don't want to set us back now. But uh, as we all know, spring has arrived in Chicago, and it's busting out all over. And uh, things are in bloom that should, shouldn't be in bloom yet. And uh, but we're not complaining now, Lord. Don't don't get us wrong. We see the, 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 the uh, true signs of spring being here. You have the robins, and you have the crocuses blooming. But the real sign, when you know spring is here, <laughs> When you see ice cream trucks in the street, I haven't seen one yet. Have you? <laughs> Not seen? at all. No. No. Yeah, that one goes by my house every single day and yeah. plays. The well, we're going to go around the table today. We want to do, oh, we'll call it trivial, trivial things, trivial matters. Like, of course, they're not trivial to people who are living their lives every day. The, the things we did years ago, the stores we went to, the neighborhood shows, candy bars, brands of cigarettes, old radio, old television, movies, sports. How many uh, pennants the Cubs have won? Uh, <coughs> <laughs> well, they, won, they won pennants, but they didn't go to the series. Uh, <coughs> you can tell what's somewhere much side my bread's buttered on, can't you? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, uh, all, all these things that, that, uh, that I, well, as I say, are called trivial, but they're not really when they add up. I mean, and you think back and you know, the old thing. So going around the table to my left, we have Mr. John Kachelko. I'm John S. Kachelko, and I'm very glad to be here, and hope you had a very happy St. Patrick's Day and a very happy St. Joseph's Day. Next up? Uh, Ken Little, and uh, ditto for what, <laughs> if, you know what, I, I can be a star hero if I just, uh, just uh, agree with John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rich Lang, local history buff, and I... Want to all wish you all a happy Easter, which is coming up quite soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm uh, Jeanette Frontier, and I'm I'm sure you're going to enjoy our uh, show today. Uh, we have a gifted uh, panel here, and uh, I just want to bring up the fact that we have the Ides of March uh, to talk about: a hundred years of the Scouts, which started in 1912, and 175 years of Chicago. Uh, which started March 4th, 1837. And, of course, as we mentioned, it's St. Joseph's Day. Um, I don't know. Are we going to uh, get into my Ides, Ides of March? It's sure. very small, very short. We'll get, can I get back to you after we had... Yeah. Now, wait a minute, folks. Now, as I used to say on What's My Line, come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please. We have a <laughs> special guest today. See if anyone knows who... The, can you say a few words, Mr. Mystery Guest? <laughs> well... And WGN, Rick Kogan once called me the invisible historian. Nobody could find me who knows where I'm at. <laughs> and the last guy in America with a, a push-button phone. <laughs> this, is, this is Vic Justino. He is the uh, MC Emeritus and a guy who's always welcome to, to stop anytime he wants back to see us. He's a guy, one of the guys that got me involved here at the station originally and... Uh, and he's, he, and he's a general, general all, along, all around good guy, folks. And I'm Glad just, to be here. I just want to say welcome back, Vic. We really appreciate you coming here today. The, the pay scale hasn't changed, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I heard well, you doubled over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, double or nothing is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, as long as uh, Vic is here, I'm sure he's going to be able to uh, tap any of story I have because I used to say to him, you must know every fire hydrant in Chicago. He, he had, does. Kenny does. Oh, uh, well... I, yeah. <laughs> In respect to his knowledge and all the uh, various people here on the panel, well, I, well, I do agree. That well, well, why, you got a dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there, all the uppies in my neighborhood have dogs. <laughs> there wasn't a question that was ever brought up on the phone or on yeah. the program that he just didn't have some source. Mm -hmm. And uh, can, I've can, always said this. I'm in awe of all of you. Can I tell you one quick story? It just always cracked me up. The first time I ever met Vic was uh, he was doing a radio show with Eddie Schwartz, just the two of them, for five hours. Mm -hmm. And I went up there as a as just as a guest, and about 
<coughs> and they run from, from midnight to 5 a.m. Around 3 o'clock, the two guys I was with, they were sleeping. We were sitting with our backs at a wall. I was <laughs> wide awake, slipping them answers, writing things down, you know, a few things. And anyway, so Vic and I were on the show uh, for eight, 17, 18 years, but this came up. Guy calls one time and says, I'm reading a uh, uh, 1912 newspaper, and he was going to ask us something about it. Speaking of 1912, and Vic goes right in. He says, you're reading a 1912 newspaper? If I were you, I'd talk to my paper boy. <laughs> you're just getting 1912. <laughs> I mean, right off the top, it still cracks me up to this day. You know. quick, 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 yeah. And he did answer whatever it was, yeah, whatever they wanted yeah. to know. By the way, Eddie Schwartz was a heck of a guy. People still talk about him, and yeah, I say yeah. a real gentleman, did a lot for the city of Chicago, and he yeah. started the Neediest Kids food drive. That yeah. was his thing. Yeah. I always enjoyed yeah. listening to him. I yeah. enjoyed yeah. listening to that late-night show yeah. of his. You yeah. can tell that he loved, the, loved Chicago, too. Oh, just, yeah. Just came through. So. You know, if you ever get out to uh, Lindy's Restaurant, 3685 South Archer, Archer Western and 37th, frame picture, 8 by 10 picture, sign. Eddie Schwartz. Uh -huh. He's been gone a long time. We did our last show with him in 94, Vic. Can you believe oh, that? Wow. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, he was. Uh, so there's a Lindy's in, in Chicago. I always think of Lindy's from Guys and Dolls in, in New York. That was the <laughs> famous eatery in New York for all Lit the yeah. Lindy's cheesecake. There's a Lindy's chili. Originally. Yeah, that Lindy's chili, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's still a great place. I, okay. I went in there and they said, Oh look at this! A hot dog. You know what a hot dog cost there? A dollar eighty nine. Oh, wow! Right. You won't the see that inflation. anymore. No, it's still dollar, no fries, but yeah. ten dollars <laughs> even so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great place. Well, Jeanette, just, you have some items here now. Just right? to uh, uh, get quickly through uh, the, the little notation I took. Uh, we of course are halfway through March, or almost toward the end of March again, uh, and we used to always use the expression "Ides of March." Uh, I-D-E-S, and actually it's a uh, Latin word uh, pronounced I-D-U-S, I -D -U -S, and uh, it, it interprets the uh, half division of the month, or as they say, the gods of, uh, the god of Mars. And uh, Idus is the uh, 15th day of March uh, as of the uh, Roman calendar. And uh, it is also a day that always has the full moon. And uh, my point of bringing it up is that even myself, I used to say, you know, I wonder what the Ides of March really meant. W was it a flower? Was it this? You know. And so that's my small yeah. interpretation. Can I, can I add a little bit You to that? can. The, the fame of the Ides of March comes from the year 44 B.C., because it was on the 15th of March, the Ides of March, that Julius Caesar was murdered, was assassinated in the Roman Senate. And the legend, of course, was that, that a soothsayer, a fortune teller, had warned him to beware the Ides, Ides of, of March. March. Yeah. And he had several warnings because he knew his enemies in the Senate mm -hmm. were, were, were very uh, eager in bringing his rule to an end. And, but, but Caesar, being the man he was, was feared nothing, and he was not going to let rumors and and soothsayers, or even his wife. His wife warned him not to go to the Senate that morning. Uh, they, of course, the story is that his right-hand man, Mark Antony, was detained by the conspirators. They got him aside on a pretext, pretending to engage him in conversation so that he would not be there to protect Caesar when the, when the knives came out. And, of course, he was, he was stabbed repeatedly by his, many of the men who had been his friends, uh, his supporters, men that he had advanced to high office and now decided that they could dispense with him. He had been the source mm -hmm. of their promotion and their success, mm -hmm. including, of course, the famous Brutus, mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah. which is, a, the, the, uh, every, everyone who's familiar with Shakespeare or any movie that's mm -hmm. ever been done knows that his last words were, et tu, Brute, right. and you, yeah. Brutus, yeah. His, a man who had been his friend, and he plunged the knife into Caesar. Mm. So, it, so this is the, the origin of you know, why, why the Ides of March comes down to us in, in history. And interesting thing, of course, uh, Caesar's full name was Gaius Julius Caesar. And people think that his family name, like an American name, would be Caesar. The family name um, in Roman names was what we would call the middle name. His family name was Julius. 
That was not his first name. It wasn't the way Julius today is his first name. He was of the, what they would have said, the Julian family. That was, that was the family. And Caesar was like a branch. It was like a grouping within the great Julian family. So he was a Julius Caesar. And his first name, of course, then was, was Gaius. Mm. And the last little thing, a little vignette about, about Caesar is that he was accused of wanting to become king. He had the title of dictator, which didn't mean in Rome what it means. Dictator t to us means a bad guy. Dictator is evil. It's Hitler. It's Mussolini. It's Stalin. Dictator was a Roman official who was given power for one year by the government in time of crisis. The government, the Senate, would hand power to this man and make so his word was law mm -hmm. because they needed a strong man to deal with a crisis, a war or an uprising or whatever it might be. So he had been given the title of dictator. And he had perpetuated himself in power, and he was reorganizing the Roman government. And he was accused of wanting to become a king. The Romans had overthrown their kings centuries. They had not, Rome had not had a king for many hundreds of years. And the story is that Caesar very cleverly said, I am not a king. I am Caesar. And the interesting thing about that is because he was hailed. You know, he was hail, we've all heard the term, hail Caesar. Caesar. His name, Caesar, became what we call an emperor. Mm -hmm. He was he was the, the forerunner of his his nephew after he's murdered, his mm -hmm. nephew Augustus becomes the first Roman emperor. Mm -hmm. And he of course makes a walk on in every in every church at Christmas time when we hear you know and the word went forth from mm -hmm. Caesar, Caesar Augustus, Augustus. Yeah, to take a census of the whole world. His his great nephew mm -hmm. uh, becomes the first Roman emperor and he is he becomes Caesar so the troops that had saluted Julius as Caesar salute his nephew and then all the subsequent emperors become Caesar he was so also uh, known as Octavian right his, his, he was known as his name was Octavius it's, it's often it given does. in English he was never called Octavian no. the way it's usually given in the movies and so forth. it was Octavius his name was Gaius Octavius Julius Caesar when when the great Caesar died he bequeathed all of his property to his nephew and his name. So his nephew became Gaius Julius Caesar. He took the name and then was later given the title of Augustus, which mm -hmm. we know him as Augustus. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that, you know, we're familiar with the term Kaiser in mm -hmm. German, the German or Kaiser Zar. or the yeah. Russian Tsar. Those are forms Zar. of Caesar. Caesar. Right. So the title Caesar lasted right down into the 20th century. Right. We had True. emperors that were, hail, were being hailed as the equivalent of Caesar. Uh -huh. So that's, uh, that, that's a little you, bit of John. the back yeah. story. Yeah. And, and I told you, I'm, going, I'm through calling the library. I am <laughs> yeah. calling all of you. <laughs> Just want uh, to add, the, the reason that they had to assassinate him because they couldn't make a political commercial about him for television, because there was none. They couldn't, have done that <laughs> they, they couldn't, they couldn't do the, what, what we murder. do to political figures <laughs> today. Permit of television. You would number on there, you know. So. You know what? One of the companies he founded is still in business. It's called Orange Julius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. Thank supposedly, you. they just had hot dogs. <laughs> I got to make another. They had hot dogs, and they said, well, how many did you have? So I said, I had two, Brute. Et, et two. <laughs> I had two, Brute. I had two, Brute. <laughs> You know, isn't it uh, amazing about Chicago history, the things you learn yeah. about it, Chicago? It is. Never. It is. It is. Was there ever an Orange Julius stand in Chicago? <laughs> yeah. I know they were big in California <clears throat> years ago. I, I didn't. They, but in the so, 70s, yeah, they were yeah. trying them downtown. Is that right? I mean, yeah. they, Someone, no, they had them in Riverside, I know, at the Riverside really? uh, this one Wall. one in Wicker Park, Bucktown, that went bankrupt. I've seen, yeah. I've seen Orange yeah. Julius there. Orange Julius. Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, Very just yeah, some more, right? Yeah, uh, and uh, actually, that was what I was going to just portray the Ides of March. I yeah, have uh, March. Well, the, 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 the Girl Scouts you were talking yes, about. Yes, I yeah. did uh, talk That's about nice. that, and of course, it's a, it's a little bit lengthy. But uh, yeah. it was uh, the Girl Scouts was uh, founded by Juliet Gordon Lowe, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the Girl Scouts of the USA at the time. And uh, in in respect to it, she had met up with. Uh, she had m left uh, the areas that she lived in, like in uh, Georgia and so on, married and went on with her life. And then she met up with a uh, fellow that was named Sir Robert Baden-Powell, and he was the uh, founder yeah. of the Boy Scouts. And, and uh, you are so right. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, she returned to Georgia, and, uh, and that was around 1912. And uh, she gathered up about 18 girls, and she registered them as the uh, 
first troop of American Girl Guides. Mm -hmm. That was the first name of the Girl Scouts. And um, obviously promoted a uniform that they would wear at the time. It was uh, blue skirts, dark stockings, and uh, the sailor shirt. And, uh, and then the next year, that organization was changed to be the Girl Scouts, uh, just as is, not of America or anything. And then it continued to grow and uh, uh, actually, uh, maybe I could say a little bit no more to jump to the very ending of uh, Juliet Gordon Lowe. She did pass away in 1927 uh, and uh, she was, uh, uh, as I say, the promoter, the founder of the Girl Scouts. Were you ever a Girl Scout? Just for weeks. Isn't yeah. that the yeah. strangest thing yeah. to ask? Yes, just I, for weeks. I, I tried to get in there, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, was, it, w it is a marvelous organization. No, sure. My wife said they had the troop. I can't remember, but I thought the building across from the fire station on Dearborn... That's there, the Boy yeah. Scouts. That's Boy oh, Scouts. that was Boys. the Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts. Yeah, Boys. Was they have a there. little... <coughs> yeah, they got a plaque. There's a plaque there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. That, oh. he, he, he even visited England and... Some Boy Scouts showed him around town or gave him directions. He thought it was a great idea, yeah. and he brought it back here in Chicago. William C. Boyce yeah, was the okay. one who brought okay. Boy Scouts. And, and, and then they, he had a publishing company, and he published a uh, uh, either a newsletter or a book on the Boy Scouts. But there is a plaque Boy's on life. the building. There is a plaque on the building. That's Pardon me. Boy's life. Boy, boy's life. Boy's life. <laughs> boy's life. <laughs> now, is it true that he intended to name it after himself and call it the Boy Scouts, boys and boys they just <laughs> misunderstood and thought <laughs> yeah. it was the Boy Scouts? Yeah. Yeah. I never can tell. Well, as of today, there are 3.2 million mm -hmm. Girl, Scouts, Girl Scouts, and then in the uh, 20s and 30s, they discovered that, uh, not discovered, they decided that uh, for promotion and for monies and and so on to do the various things they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they started selling the girl cookies, the cookies, yeah. and they started mm -hmm. out at twenty-five cents hmm. a yeah. box. So you know what they are today? I would interpret four to five dollars a, a box. Four dollars a box. Yeah. yeah. The last time I bought yeah. some is. Isn't there a direct close. Chicago connection with Julia Gordon Lowe's family? I think she's a descendant of John Kinsey. She's a descendant of Kinsey. Oh, I know. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The Kinsey you are so right. Of the yeah. Kinsey Report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one, right. No. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. she's Major yeah, Kinsey, Kinsey Gordon. Kinsey. She's related uh -huh. to the to the Kinseys, mm -hmm. yeah. The uh, Norwood Park Historical Society, which has, was organized, uh, their Girl, Girl Scout troop was organized as troop number one in Chicago. They have an article uh, in their newsletter. I'm a member. Uh, I back up all the, uh, subscribe to all the, <coughs> you know, historical societies, locals, and I haven't read the whole thing, but uh, I'm going to keep it. She's really, I don't know exactly how, but uh, mm -hmm. down the line, you know. Well, yeah. Well, what's her name now? Uh, oh, uh, the lady? Julia. Uh, that's Juliet Gordon Lowe. L -O -W. L -O -W. That's her maiden name. Just Lowe. L -O -W. Yeah. And then she married uh, in 1886 to uh, uh, William. Now, let's see now. You were saying at that time, uh, yeah, she married uh, Majo Kinsey Gordon First in Kinsey. 1860. Mm -hmm. And then um, <coughs> evidently somewhere in, there's a <coughs> disconnect. But in 1886, she married William McKay Lowe. Lowe. Hmm. And yeah. he was a wealthy It's just L-O-W. It's L -O -W. just L-O-W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, it's L-O-W. Could be pronounced yeah. differently or Lowe. 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 Well, uh -huh. that's it. So she it's married right. into the family. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She must have been an old-timer then if she was getting married in 1860, for God's sakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well. She yeah. was married in 1860? Well, yeah. And she's founding the Girl Scouts in, in 1912. 1912. Yeah, it's 52 yeah. years later. Well, wow. Yeah. And then she lives for another 15 mm -hmm. years. <coughs> well, yeah. they're, they're she's um, married fairly late in life. When she, wow. yeah, found yeah. Their efforts sure were, were well founded because, as we know, they're, they're alive and well today. Yeah. Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. <coughs> no, she was born in 1860. Did oh, it. she was did born it. Juliet McGill Kinsey Gordon in 1860, and oh. she married in 1886. Oh, thank you, okay. John. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would, I mean, it would, it would be. No, it would, it, that would have it been, makes would have been, no yeah. common sense, does yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> you never can tell, you know. Did anybody, and I've I'm, I'm been asked this question a lot of times, and since what we're doing, people say to me, and the teachers tell me right now, I said, boy, you're not doing much with history. They says, Victor, 
we're charged with math and science only. That's where the emphasis is going is. Don't you think history is important? Why is American history important for people to learn or students to learn? Any comments on Anybody that? got any ideas on that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. why, why should they learn? <coughs> well, number, well, go ahead. Do you want to say something, well, I, I was a history yeah, Well, I was a history major. I studied history. Doesn't show, high school, but college, uh, and, but I mean, history is is everything. History is the right. history is the story of of your country. It's the story of how we got to where we are. I don't think you can be a, effective in anything if you don't have an Agreed. understanding of history. If you don't know how mm -hmm. we got to where we are today, is it going to help me make a living? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. How? Sure, because. Uh, it, it enables you to to have an understanding of all the things that are important for you to function in life. I mean, if you if if you have no understanding of how the government operates, if you have no understanding of why our tax system, how we got to have a tax system in this country, if you have no understanding of what's going on in the world, you might find your you know, guys have been drafted into into the armed services. If if you don't have an understanding of history, if you don't know the world, now if, your question is, is it going to help you make a living? Depends on depends on the living that you're going into. I mean, if you're going to be a mathematician, do you need to know history specifically for your job? Maybe not. But how many other things that you learn in school may have nothing directly to do with with earning a living? I mean, everything we learn in school is not directly mm -hmm. geared. I towards think you hit a, cu a, a, a couple very good points, yeah. especially today with the changing, the different cultures that are involved, and so forth. I mean, you go to Truman College students from 57 countries, yeah. including Mongolia and Tibet. Yeah. And people say to me, I says, you know what, you better read Tom Brokaw's book, uh, The Greatest Generation. Yeah. I mm -hmm. says, that'll teach you something about people that paid for us to be where we're at yeah. right yeah. now. And you're so right, Vic, and, and, and just a point that John made, and, and both you, uh, history to me, and, and I kind of learned this as I'm talking to my younger workers, uh, is your background. It is your background. And, and you were saying, could it make a living? Possibly the word a living, uh, you know, defining where you're going to go with that. Um, since it's your background, you can also find out sometime how it molds your personality how it mo totally. molds your totally. moods. Mm -hmm. uh, authenticity is, is, is a wonderful reaction to in conversation. You know, I was there, I know this, uh, that. And, you know, every hundred years is another group of us discussing this history. But um, that is a good point, knowing how the country got formed, knowing... Mm -hmm. When they go, well, Lincoln said that, or Lincoln did that. Who's Lincoln? You yeah. know, it's like we have to know more mm -hmm. to talk more. We, we're, we're so present-oriented. You know, mm -hmm. people say, gee, so-and-so is the greatest ball player of all time, or the greatest, the great... And they have no mm. they have no knowledge whatever of, of, of say Babe Ruth what, 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 or, of all the other and little guys because they just think that the guy that they see today, today. Yeah. is the greatest thing the greatest mm -hmm. singer and they have no conception of mm -hmm. all that came before him and mm -hmm. all the great people that there were. You need before. the historical perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, yeah, and exactly. and what I'm finding so it's very sad is um, in in my daily life uh, working with younger people, uh, they aren't even interested one. And two, it has, uh, they have lost their conversational base. There's something that, it, it just, a sentence is a sentence. It doesn't have a question mark. It doesn't have mm -hmm. an exclamation mark. It's just the end of where their mind went, and that's the end of it. Why is it, why is it important to you? Okay, because let's, what? go this ahead. Is, this is me, I'm, I'm uh, Jack Ryan. Uh, important to me because you... You got. I think someone might have you might have alluded to before. You, to, to to know where you're going, you got to know where you've been. Mm -hmm. you know why the things are the Good way point. they are. This brings to mind. I was going to say two things. Uh, one was about the 2000 election, where it looked like it looked as if Bush was going to win the electoral votes but lose the popular vote. How many people I heard say, "How can that happen?" <laughs> one one yeah. guy says to me. When did they start that? I said, well, I think the <laughs> Constitution the was yeah. ratified in 1789, uh -huh. and it was proposed in 1787. 
So, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, now, do they go to the same civics class as you and I did, or history? You wonder sometimes. I was, Kenny, your thoughts yeah. on why history is You important. know what, and I teach history. You know what part of the problem is? Actually, it's two-pronged. Number one, <laughs> the very word scares everybody off. They, first of all, I think you're going to talk about the Ides of March. Uh, who cares what well, happened, yeah. uh, you know, Caesar and all that. The word is made of two words. His story. Mm -hmm. It's a story. Mm -hmm. And every time mm -hmm. you make a decision in your life, it's based on something that happened in the past. Don't have to go back to uh, the founding of Chicago. Just go back to your parents. Exactly. Your yeah. mother said this. Your father mm -hmm. said this. My, my mother did that. For young kids... It doesn't mean anything. I, we, you know, I came from a Catholic grammar school. We, they didn't teach us uh, in high school too. We never had a Chicago history uh, course at all. But as you start to get into it, and that as you get a little into history yourself, where you get a little bit older, then you start saying, "Oh, I remember this, uh, this uh, neighbor, this the landlord did this, and that it was right or it was wrong." That's all history because mm -hmm. history is. Everything that happened yesterday. But, you know. What's it that you say on the History Channel? History made fresh every day? Yeah. Is there a slogan? Yeah. Also? And if, if yeah. history is taught badly, it is the most boring That's subject right. yeah. on earth. Yeah. If it is taught well, it's the most interesting, interesting. subject. Sure. And I, I mean, I was I had excellent <laughs> history professors in college who really made it, as you say, a story. You understand mm -hmm. this is a story. Mm -hmm. It's not just a collection of dates and facts, battles right. and yeah. facts, and they used to call that the dry as dust approach mm -hmm. to yeah. history. Yeah. And but if it's taught well, there's nothing there's nothing right. more interesting or fascinating than history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's an example. Uh, a few months ago, I was at a lecture, and a gentleman was from the Pilsen community, and he was a Hispanic artist. And I said to him, I says, you know, sir. Many of the people in your community know nothing about the history of Pilsen. They don't even know the origin of the name. And he yeah. was a little emotional about it. He says, do you? I says, I certainly do. I says, sure. it's tied in with Czechoslovakia and, sure. and et cetera, et cetera. I said, don't you think this is important yeah. as the part of the history, as part of you to look back and... Yeah. I, is that where you get Pilsen or beer from, the name? Sure. Kind yeah. of. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, that's an old check. You still have yeah. the church <coughs> down on 18th Street. Uh, St. Procopius. Who went out yeah. and way out. Out in Lyle. Yeah, yeah sure. but they're still down there. You know what yeah. else, too? All the buildings are down there. Mm -hmm. All the buildings that the, the checks, Cahoot, you know. Uh, Cahoot, yeah. Taylor's used to be there. Cahoot, Cahoot was Taylor's a, and uh, on the Halls Street. They're gone now, but I mean. Yeah. And you know, that big uh, auditorium on Ashland Avenue off of 18th Street, that old... Uh, now they've done another oh, one. Oh, Pulaski this Hall, you mean? Well, or one of those <coughs> halls over there. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, you go in there and you talk to the people. Now, I took a bunch out uh, oh, last summer. We went to Oakwood Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And I pointed out, yeah. this is, there's Mayor Harold Washington's grave. Yeah. There's Jesse Owens buried over there. And I says, come over here. Here's the thousands of Confederate soldiers buried in mass grave. Mm -hmm. And they looked yeah. at the names and they said, Oh my God! Yeah, we were involved in the Civil War. Oh, so absolutely! Aren't there, yeah. um, aren't there policemen from the Haymarket riot buried there too? You guys got killed there. I'm not sure. On I'm that not one. sure. There's yeah. There's a memorial. Uh, uh, yeah, it's possible. There's a memorial to the uh, firemen killed at the uh, what they call the coal storage building. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. In, what was that in state and? Uh, that was, uh, no, it was part of the Columbian Exposition. Oh, it was okay. at 64th and Stony Island. Oh, wrong and uh, the fire museum has a statue of Christopher Columbus. Speaking of, you know, it's oh, a big yeah. day for the Italians, you know. Yeah, you stole that from the Italians, that statue. We're trying to get it back. Well, Who'd you steal it from? <laughs> yeah, it's the other way around. Uh, you want to steal it from us. Well, gang, hold, the, hold, hold the thought, everybody. We're getting a signal from the boss uh -oh. here. It's time uh -oh. for a break. We're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and uh, I'm Jack Ryan, and our panel will be right back. <laughs>